I am Michaela Marie Ibanez. And I am Joyce Marcel G. Arasa. We will be your study partners for this video. So, get ready and let's start accounting. Today, we will discuss Chapter 5, Bonds Playable. Here are the learning objectives. At the end of this video, I hope that you will be able to understand the nature and purpose of a bond, to identify the types of bond, to know the measurement of bonds payable, to understand the concept of bond premium and bond discount, to describe the methods of amortizing bond premium and bond discount, and to apply the fair value option of measuring bonds payable. So without further ado, let's get started. First, what is bond? It is a formal unconditional promise made under seal to pay a specified sum of money at a determinable future date and to make periodic interest payments at a stated rate until the principal sum is paid. Therefore, bond is a liability. It is issued by corporations or companies since according to the definition, it is made under seal. Earlier, I said that bond is a liability, right? But the question is, how is bond different from other kinds of liability? It is different because in a bond transaction, huge amount of money is loaned. For example, company XYZ wants to borrow 500 million pesos. But the problem is, a company or an institution cannot lend them that huge amount of money. Therefore, what they would do is to make a bond transaction. Instead of having only one creditor, they would divide that amount to various creditors until they completely have that full 500 million pesos. That's why bond is a contract of debt whereby one party called the issuer borrows fund from another party called the investor. They are called issuer because they issue a certificate that represents their liability. On the other hand, the creditor is called an investor because they would gain income from, from the money they lend to the issuer through the interest and they require the issuer to repair, repay the principal borrowed. Bond is considered as a debt security since it entitled their owners to a stream of interest payments. Also, it is evidenced by a certificate and a document called bond indenture. So when an issuer borrowed money, they issue a bond certificate to the investor which generally contains the amount of the money, mar the money borrowed, the stated interest rate, and the maturity date. However, only limited information can be written in a bond certificate. That's why bond indenture exists. It is a document which shows in detail the terms of the loan and the rights and duties of the borrower and the other parties to the contract. Another information, just like a stock market, bond market also exists. It allows the public to enter into a bond transaction and they are still considered as an investor. The bond market includes debt securities like bonds, issued by governments and corporations, both domestic and foreign. So, there are different types of bonds. We have term, serial, mortgage, collateral trust, debenture, registered, bearer, convertible, callable, guaranteed, junk, and zero coupon bonds. Let's start with bonds according to maturity. So, we have term and serial bonds. Term bonds are bonds with a single date of maturity. In short, there is a fixed or specific date of payment, isang beses lang na pagbabayad ng buong principal. Also, term bonds require the issuing entity to establish a sinking fund. A sinking fund is a fund containing money set aside to pay off a debt or bond. To better understand term bonds, we have an example here. So, Company X may issue 1 million pesos worth of bonds in January 2022, all of which are set to mature on the same date three years later. Therefore, investor can expect repayment in January 2025. Next is serial bonds. It is a bond with a series of maturity dates. 
Unlike in term bonds, which allows a one-time payment of the principal, in serial bonds, multiple or a series of payment of principal exists. Also, it allows the retirement of bonds by installments. Here is an example. Company X may issue a 1 million pesos bond issue and allocate its repayment of 250,000 pesos over 4 years. Next are bonds according to security. We have mortgage bonds, collateral trust bonds, and debenture bonds. First is mortgage bonds. So it is a bond secured by a mortgage on real properties. So, when an issuer borrowed money from an investor, they include a security in their condition. This condition is written in the bond indenture. So, in a mortgage bond, there is a security and the security are real properties such as land and building. As always, here is an example. Company X borrowed 1 million pesos from a bank and put its equipment up as a mortgage. If the company meets all the payments, it can retain its ownership of the equipment. If not, then the bank can sell the equipment to retain the money lent. Next is the collateral trust bonds. It is a bond secured by assures and bonds of other corporations. It's the same with the mortgage bonds wherein they included security in their conditions. However, instead of real properties, the securities are shares and bonds of other corporations. So example, Company X issues a collateral trust bond and as a collateral for the bond, it includes the right to Company X shares held by a trust company. The bondholders would be entitled to the shares held in trust if Company X were to default on the bond payments. Last bonds according to security is the debenture bonds. These are unsecured or bonds without collateral security. So, unlike in mortgage and collateral trust bonds, in debenture bonds, no securities such as real properties or shares are involved. Next one are the types of debenture bonds or bonds according to how we can determine the payee. We have two, registered and coupon or bearer bonds. Registered bonds requires the registration of the name of the bondholders on the books of the corporation. It is because there are also circumstances where bonds were sold to another investor from an investor to another investor transaction. So to avoid confusion, the issuer needs to know to whom he should pay the interest. They should know who holds the bond as of a certain date. That's why in registered bonds, the name of the bondholder should be registered on the books of the corporation. So for example, NAMI is the one registered in the books of Straw Hat Company to bear the interest. Then the next day, she sold the bonds to you. So, since NAMI is the one registered in the books, she would be the one receiving the interest even though she already sold her bonds to you. So, next is coupon or bearer bonds. These are unregistered bonds in the sense that the name of the bond holder is not recorded on the entity books. In this one, the one who holds the bonds will be the one receiving the interest. Just like in our example earlier, NAMI sold her bonds to you. So, Therefore, USOP, which is the bearer of the bonds, will receive the interest. There are other types of bonds. First is the convertible bonds that can be exchanged for shares of the issuing entity. So the issuer can include in the bond indenture that after a certain period, the bondholder can convert his bond into an ordinary share. Next, callable bonds. These are bonds which may be called in for redemption prior to the maturity date. In this one, the issuer can pay the principal even before the maturity date. So for example, the maturity date is in December 2022 and I, the issuer, has already the money to pay for the principal. Therefore, I can pay back the investor now, even though the maturity date is in December. This is only allowed if I entered into a callable bond transaction. Then, guaranteed bonds. Bonds issued whereby another party promises to make payment if the borrower fails to do so. In this one, a guarantor exists. If the issuer cannot pay back the principal, then the investor can go to the guarantor and they will be the one to pay the money. To determine who the guarantor is, the investor can find it on the bond indenture. Next, junk bonds. These are high-risk, high-yield bonds issued by entities that are heavily indebted or otherwise in weak financial condition. In this one, the issuer offers higher interest rates to attract investors. Normally, corporations who are already bankrupt are the one who offers junk bonds. These bonds are also most possible to be a scam. Last type of 
bonds is the zero coupon bonds. These are bonds that pay no interest but offers a return in the form of a deep discount or huge discount from the face amount. For example, the face amount in the bond certificate is 1,000 pesos, but the issuer gave it for only 200 pesos. So it says that the zero coupon bonds pay no interest but offers a return in the form of a deep discount. There may be zero interest written on the certificate, but in reality, the deep discount, the 800 pesos, is the interest. It is already deducted from the face amount. Now, let's talk about the features of a bond issue. First is the bond indenture or the deed of trust. It is a document which contains the terms of the loan and the rights of the parties. There is also a contract between the bondholders and the borrower or issuing entity. Some of its contents are the characteristics of bonds, the grace period, the maturity date, establishment of the sinking fund, provisions affecting mortgage property, and etc. Next, the bond certificate. This is issued by issuer to the investor to represent their liability. Each bond certificate represents a portion of the total loan. 1,000 pesos is the usual minimum denomination, but smaller denominations may be issued occasionally. If a security exists for a loan, then the trustee is named to hold title to the property serving as security. They act as the representative of the bond holders. Lastly, the registrar or disbursing agent, they serve as the middleman between the issuer and the investor. Like what I have said earlier, huge amounts are involved in a bond transaction. That's why, for the issuer to collect the huge amount, bonds are issued in small denominations such as by 100, 1,000, and 10,000 pesos to encourage investors. And, it is always evidenced by a bond certificate and, of course, the bond indenture. For example, a 50 million pesos bond issue may be issued in denomination of 1,000. Thus, there shall be 50,000 bonds with fees of 1,000 pesos each. In sale of bonds, payable may be undertaken by the entity itself. Pwede sila na mismo directly magbenta or with the help of underwriter or investment bank. They will be the one responsible for reselling the bonds to investors. When an entity sells a bond issue, they need to make sure to pay the principal and the interest according to the indicated maturity date. Usually, interest is paid every six months or semi-annually and annually. Moving on, let's talk about the measurement of bonds payable. Bonds payable is initially and subsequently measured. First, if, if bonds payable is initially designated at fair value through profit or loss, then it is initially measured at fair value, then subsequently measured at fair value also. Next, if bonds payable is not designated at fair value through profit or loss, then it is initially measured at fair value minus the transaction cost such as the legal cost or the bond issue cost and subsequently it is measured at an amortized cost as a refresher amortization is the process of allocating the bond premium as deduction from interest income and the bond discount as addition to interest income the reason of amortization is to bring the carrying amount of the investment to face amount on the date of maturity these are the two important terms to remember bond premium and bond discount Bond premium is the loss on the part of the bond holder, while bond discount is the gain on the part of the bond holder. I hope you are still with me. I already introduced you to bonds payable, so let's move forward to the accounting for issuance of bonds payable. We have two approaches in accounting for the authorization and issuance of bonds. We have the memorandum and journal entry approach. First, the memorandum approach. On January 1, 2021, the, an entity is authorized to issue 10-year 12% bonds with face amount of 5 million pesos. Interest payable January 1 and July 1, consisting of 5,000 units of 1,000 pesos face amount. The bonds are sold at face amount to an underwriter. In memorandum approach, we don't have a journal entry for the authorization of the bonds. What we should do is to make a memo entry. So for this transaction, our memo entry is... On January 1, 2021, the entity is authorized to issue 5 million pesos face amount, 10-year 12% bonds. Interest payable January 1 and July 1 consisting of 5,000 units of 1,000 pesos face amount. And of course, to record the issuance of the bonds at face amount, we debit cash and credits bonds payable both for 5 million pesos. 
For the journal entry approach, we have the same transaction. Here, instead of a memo entry, we will make a journal entry for the authorization of the bonds. So, we will debit an issued bonds payable and credit authorized bonds payable both for 5 million pesos. Entry for the issuance of the bonds at face amount are the same in the memorandum approach. However, on the credit side, we will use the account title and issued bonds payable. So, that's the journal entry if the bond is issued at the face amount. What if the bond is issued at a premium or the issue price is more than the face amount of the bonds payable? Here is an example. An entity issued bonds payable with face amount of 5 million pesos at 105. The quoted price of 105 means 105% of the face amount of the bonds. The journal entry to record the issue once of bonds payable at the premium is to debit cash for 5,250,000 pesos to get this amount. So, 5 million times 105 is equals to 5,250,000 pesos. Then, we should credit bonds payable for 5 million and premium of bonds payable for 250,000. To get 250,000, we just need to deduct the face amount of 5 million pesos to the issue price of 5,250,000 pesos. The premium on bonds payable is in effect again on the part of the issuing entity because it receives more than what it is obligated to pay under the terms of the bond issue. However, the premium on bonds payable is not reported as an outright gain. When the bonds are sold at a premium, it means that the investor is amenable to receive interest that is somewhat less than the nominal or stated rate of interest. Because of the relationship of the premium to the interest, the premium on bonds payable is amortized over the life of the bonds payable and credited to the interest expense. So, if the bonds have a 10-year life and the straight line method is used, the entry to record the amortization of the premium on bonds payable is to debit premium of bonds payable for 25000 and credit interest expense for 25000 To get 25000 we just need to divide 250000 by 10 years. Now, what if the bond is issued at a discount or the issue price is less than the face amount of the bonds payable? Here is an example. An entity issued bonds payable with a face amount of 5 million pesos at 95. The quoted price of 95 means 95% of the face amount of the bonds. The journal entry to record the issue once of bonds payable at a discount is to debit cash for 4,750,000 pesos. To get this amount, so 5 million times 95 is equal to 4,750,000 pesos. Then, debit discount on bonds payable of 250,000. Then, credit bonds payable for 5 million pesos. To get 250,000, we just need to deduct the issue price of 4,750,000 to the face amount of 5 million. The discount on bonds payable is in effect a loss to the issuing entity. However, the discount on bonds payable is not treated as an outright loss. When bonds are sold at a discount, it means that the investor is not willing to accept simply the nominal rate of interest. So, the entry to record the amortization of the discount on bonds payable is to debit interest expense and credit discount on bonds payable for both 25,000 pesos. Here is the presentation of bond discount and premium. As you can see, the discount on bond payable is a deduction from the bond payable and the premium on bond payable is an addition to the bond payable. Last are bond issue costs which are transaction costs directly attributable to the issue of bonds payable. Under the PFRS 9, bond issue costs shall be deducted from the fair value or issue price of bonds payable in measuring initially the bonds payable. On the other hand, under the effective interest method of amortization, the bond issue cost must be lumped with the discount on bonds payable and netted against the premium on bonds payable. Lastly, if the bonds are measured at fair value through profit or loss, the bond issue costs are immediately expensed. Thank you, Ms. Roma. Now let's talk about recording interest on bonds payable. In bonds payable, taking account of interest is crucial. Why is this so? It is mentioned earlier that bonds have a long-term life. Therefore, gain or loss should be allocated during its lifetime. 
Also, bonds have debtor and creditor relationship, which means that bonds have also a right to acquire interest. From that transaction, gain or loss should be or must be added through the use of the accounts of premium on, this, on bonds payable or discounts on bonds payable, which will be amortized and will then be part of the interest expense. So, it can be a reduction or an increase on the interest expense. But, remember that lahat ng yun ay dapat na napapasok sa interest expense lang. At hindi ka pwede magdagdag ng kahit anong accounts. Only the interest expense account is used. Okay. For us to understand this, uh, let's take this situation as an example. So, on March 1, 2021, an entity issued bonds payable would face amount of 5 million and 12% interest payable, payable semi-annually on March 1 and September 1. And as much as the bonds are issued on March 1, the first payment of an interest will be on September 1. So what will be our journal entries? So for the year 2021, on September 1, uh, it will be the entry to record the semi-annual interest payment First, we will debit the interest expense for 300,000 and we will credit cash for 300,000. So, how did we get this 300,000? First, we will multiply the 5 million to 12% and multiply it also to 1 over 2. So, ano yung 1 over 2? Yun yung 1 over 2 na semi-annual payment nga natin. So, it will be equal to 300,000. So, next... On December 31, interest accrued for 4 months. So, ang entry natin for that will be debit the interest expense for 200,000 and credit the accrued interest payable for 200,000. So, our computation is 5 million times 12% times 4 over 12 is equal to 200,000. So, saan ang galing yung 4 over 12? So, pag sinabi nga nating accrued, di ba? Pag sinabi accrual, Yun yung na-incur na, na natin, however, hindi pa siya nababayaran. So, this means na yung payment natin, di ba, is yung payment natin ng interest ay nangyayari ng September 1 at ng March 1. Since pagdating ng December 31 ay nasa or naggagawa na tayo ng ating financial, financial report na for balance sheet, ibig sabihin hindi pa natin maa-account yung March 1 as payment. So, ang gagawin natin, i-accrued muna natin yung mula sa September September hanggang sa December, which is 4 months nga. Now, pagdating ng January 1, on the next year, 2022, we will reverse the reverse our entry, which is debit accrued interest payable for 200,000 and then credit interest expense for 200,000. So, pagdating ng March 1, ayan na, dumating na ang ating panibagong semi-annual payment which is another 300,000 debited to our interest expense account and credited to our cash account. Pagdating ng September 1 again, meron tayong semi-annual interest payment. Ganon ulit ang ating entry, only debit the interest expense and then credit the cash. And hanggang sa dumating na yung December 31, katulad nga ng, ng kanina, inakru natin ulit yung 4 months since wala pa ang March 1. Now, ayan. Punta naman tayo sa ating issuance of bonds payable on interest date. In the issuance of bonds on interest dates, premium on bonds payable or discounts on bonds payable may be amortized at the end of the year or usually every interest dates. When the bonds are issued and the payment of interest falls on the balance sheet dates, it would be less complicated because the accrual of interest is not needed. However, if the interest dates falls on the date different from the balance sheet dates, interest will then be accrued in its proper periods. Moreover, the journal entry for the next payment of the interest will include the accrued amount recorded on the balance sheet date, which will result in the presentation of statement of financial position as a part of current liability along with the bonds payable treated as a non-current liability. Now we come to the next part, which is the issuance of bonds between interest dates. Most of the entities choose not to issue bonds on the exact date they bear interest. Instead, 
the uh, the entity or the issuer collects from the invest investors the interest that has accrued since the last interest payment date. This means that when recording the bond issuance, accrued interest should be included and it will be paid by the buyer. After that, when the payment of interest occurs, that's the time the issuer pays the bondholders for the entire interest periods. Remember that accrued interest that is sold is credited to the interest expense account. As a result, the entry for the issuance of bonds is to debit the cash for the total cash received, premium on bonds payable if it is issued higher than the face amount, and then the interest expense, of course. Thenceforth, when the interest date comes, the entry would be debiting the interest expense account and then crediting the cash account. However, you could also use another approach, which instead of the or crediting the interest expense account, you will be crediting the accrued interest payable account on the entry of issuance of bonds. Both approaches must still have correct balance of interest expense. Let's proceed to the retirement of bonds. I'm sure familiar na kayo sa term na retirement since no uh, mga previous discussions natin about shares ay nababanggit na rin yung retirement. However, in bonds payable, almost similar din naman pero may kasarili ding definition yung retirement of bonds payable. So, retirement of bonds is tantamount to debt payment. Bond in bond retirement occurs when an entity repurchases bonds that it had previously issued to investors. The company is essentially uh, is essentially paying those investors what loaned the money their principal back and getting rid of the debt obligations. Securities that have been bought back in this way are called retired securities. That retired securities is the bond itself that will extinguish the liability. So, yung bonds natin, it may retire on preview, on maturity date or prior to maturity date. Let's discuss first the retirement of bonds payable on maturity date. So, dito actually wala namang ganong accounting problems. Kasi, ang gagawin lang natin dito, hindi na natin kailangan i-account yung gain or loss on retirement kasi wala namang ganong dito. Uh, the only journal entry for this simply requires to debit the amount, specifically the carrying amount of, of the bonds payable and then credit the cash if paid in cash. Pero kadalasan ito ay hindi lang basta cash but also or but a sinking fund. Kadalasan yung binabayad yung sinking fund. Kasi yung mga company or yung mga entity, uh, nag establish sila ng sinking fund only for the purpose of retiring of bonds. Sa so, pamamagitan kasi noon, napapabango nila yung mga bonds issue nila. So, mas maraming na aspiring bondholders yung nakakakita noon. Kapag ginagawa nila yung, nag-establish nila ng sinking fund, restricted for the payment of bonds. Or retirement of bonds, rather. On the other hand, bonds may be retired prior to the maturity date. In this case, the entity retires their bond earlier than the maturity date. So, kung yung maturity date natin ay March 1, 2025, yung entity ni retire nila yung bonds on March 1, 2023. Mas maaga dun sa maturity date. So, bakit to nangyayari? The entity wants to, or meron silang cash reserves or business operations nila. Or, Pwede ring na masyadong nagbabago-bago yung interest rates ng or interest rates and ang ginagawa ng mga company is to tinatik advantage nila yung mga mas magagandang borrowings and then ang ginagawa nila nagre-refinance sila. So also pwede ring ayaw na nila magbayad ng interest. Ayaw na lang puro sila na lang sila na nagbabayad, nagbabayad ng interest or outstanding debt. So, ang ginagawa nila, nire-retire nila yung bonds ng mas maaga kumpara doon sa maturity date. So, what will be the accounting treatment if we retire the bonds earlier than the maturity date? So, unlike unlike the bonds retire, bond retirement on maturity date, bond retirement prior to the maturity date has a complex accounting treatment. So, we have procedures na we will be follow we will be following for us to record this retirement. 
So, para mas maintindihan natin siya, let's take this illustration and then isasabay natin yung mga procedures. So, first, let's read this. March 1 to 2021, bonds with face amount of 5 million pesos are issued for 4,730,000. The bonds are dated March 1, 2021 and mature in 5 years and pay 12% interest semi-annually on March 1 and September 1. Straight line method is used. All of the bonds are retired on July 1, 2024 at 97. So, may kita na agad natin ang iba't ibang gagamitin natin. So, the first thing we will do is to amortize or update the amortization of premium and discounts and discount on pay bonds payable. So, the entry for this is debit the interest expense for 27,000 and then credit the discounts on bonds payable for 27,000. So, our computation will be 270,000 divide 5 years and then this will be equal to 54,000 which is the annual amortization and then the, that annual amortization will be multiplied to 1 over 2 and then it will be equal to 27,000 for our next procedure or for our next step is to determine the balance of premium or discount now, we have discounts on bonds payable on March 1, 2021, which is tw amounted to 270000 And then we will subtract amortization from March 2021 to July 1, 2024, which is 180000 And then it will then be, or it will be equal to 90000 So, yun na yung balance natin for July 1, 2024. So, in number 3, in number 3, Determination of accrued interest to date of retirement. Ang itadetermine naman natin ay accrued interest. So, what we'll be doing is to compute 5 million pesos multiplied by the 12% and then times to 4, 4 over 12. It will be equal to 200,000 pesos. Again, our computation for this is 5 million times 12% times 4 over 12. So, for number 4, computation of total cash payment. Total cash payment na kinocompute na natin. Which is equal to the sum of retirement price and the crude interest. So, ano yung retirement price natin? The retirement price is the 5 million face amount times 97. And then, a crude interest of 200,000. So, that retirement price is equal to 4,850,000. And then, we will add the crude interest for 200,000. And then... The sum of that is the total cash payment, which is 5,050,000. In number 5, carrying amount naman ng bonds payable yung determine natin. So, what we'll be doing is to subtract the discounts on bonds, bond payable on the bonds, pay, carry, on the bonds payable. So, our bonds payable is the face amount, face amount of 5 million. And then, nilas natin yung discount on bonds payable, which is 90,000. And the, then the sum, or the di difference, difference rather, is the carrying amount on July 1, 2024, which is 4,910,000. In number 6, the gain or loss on the early retirement of extinguishment. So, gain or loss naman ang determine natin. It will be computed by um, subtracting, or yung carrying amount of bonds payable, ilalas natin dun sa, or Ilalas natin yung retirement price. So, yung 4,910,000 less than 4 or less 4,850,000 and the equal or the difference is the gain on early retirement which is 60,000 pesos or 60,000. For our last step is the recognition of retirement. So, i-record na natin yung retirement ng bonds. So, the date will be July 1, 2024. And for our debit entries, we have bonds payable and interest expense for 5 million and 200,000 respectively. And we will credit the cash for 5 million 50,000. Yan yung total cash payment natin kanina na kinumpute natin. And the discounts on bonds payable, which is the 90,000. 
na in-update natin kanina sa first step natin. And lastly, the gain on early retirement of bonds, which is nandun sa step 6 na ginawa natin, which is 60,000. Ayan. So, ang gain on, gain on early retirement or extinguishment of bonds may be represented as part of finance cost or other income. So, pagdating niyan sa statement of or the present, presentation niya sa balance sheet or sa, sa ating statement of accounts, ang nangyayari ay nagiging part siya ng finance cost or other income. Ayan, punta naman tayo sa partial retirement of bonds. So, sometimes bonds are retired or retired not totally, which means partial lang yung nare-retire na bonds sa kanya. Halimbawa, dun sa kanina nating illustration, we retired the bonds of 5 million totally. Lahat ng yun, nire-retire natin. Pero what if, pagdating ng July 1, 2024, ang nire-retire lang natin ay 1 million. So, 1 million lang nire-retire natin na face amount. So, ang gagawin lang natin is, susundan lang din natin yung procedure na sinabi kanina, mula yung step 1 up to step 7. And then, the amortization of the discounts on bonds payable is also updated to July 1, 2024. Yeah, update din natin yung amortization. And the entry for that will be interest expense, debit, and then credit the discounts on bonds payable for 27,000. So, halos the same din ang procedure. Now, pagdating sa partial retirement of bonds nga, i-adjust natin yung mga kinakailangan nating i-record na amortization for premium or discounts on bonds payable. And also, meron yung, ang magiging, ang natitira na lang nating problema or the remaining problem in accounting or in treating the bonds retirement is the remaining amount of bonds payable. So, syempre, kung partial lang yung ni-retire mo na bonds, ibig sabihin mo yung matitira pa dun sa, mo, dun sa bonds payable mo. And yan yung i-account mo for the partial retirement of bonds. So, ang magiging journal entry lang or performa entry dyan ay, is, of course, payment, another payment for semi-annual interest payment and then i-accrued nga ulit, katulad ng mga nabanggit kanina. And after that, yung discounts and payable natin ay i-credit natin and debit natin yung interest expense. Moving on to our next subtopic, so we have the treasury bonds. So, when we say treasury bonds, I know another familiar term again. Kanina, retirement, ngayon naman treasury. So, nabibring back yung memories natin sa treasury shares. Yes, they have also same concept. concept. However, we the, in this case, bonds naman ang pinag-uusapan natin. So, treasury bonds. So, these are originally issued bonds owned and reacquired by an entity but not cancelled. So, kung kanina, sa bond retirement prior to the maturity ay kin ay maaring i-cancel after na retire or yun nga nire-retire tas cancel na cancel out na yung yung bonds natin hindi na siya open for reissuance dito sa treasury bonds ay baliktad uh, or or different naman or iba siya ay eh, kailangan natin siyang hindi siya kina-cancel pero nire-acquire siya ibig sabihin meron pa ring intention yung entity na i-reissue yung bonds. So, ayun. Since halos same lang din sila nung, nung bond retirement prior to maturity date, they also have same procedures. So, in the accounting treatment for treasury bonds, we debit the face value or face amount of treasury bonds. So, I repeat, we debit the face value of the treasury bonds. Face value ang ginagamit natin sa treasury bonds. And then, an amortized premium or discount of this should be cancelled. So, kadalasan kinakredit natin yung premium on discount on bonds payable. Then, interest expense should be decreased by any accrued interest. So, yung gain or loss, meron tayong gain or loss on the acquisition of the treasury bonds. That is the difference between the acquisition cost and the carrying amount of the treasury bonds. So, Let's see this illustration. An entity originally issued bonds payable with face amount of 5 million pesos at 105 or a premium of 250,000. Subsequently, 
the entity reacquired bonds with 1 million pesos face amount to be re to be placed in the treasury share or tre treasury bond at 103 at the same time of the reacquisition the unamortized premium on bonds payable is 200 pesos and the crude interest on the treasury bonds is 300 pesos which paid in cash so our journal entry for this is first we debit the treasury bonds as i have mentioned earlier at face value which is 1 million and then we debit also the premium on bonds payable for 40,000 and the interest expense for 30,000 and then we will credit the cash for 1 million 60,000 and the gain on early retirement of bonds for 10,000 after the recognition of the acquisition Ayan, meron tayong, re pwede natin i na, yun nga. So, na-record na, na natin yung acquisition of treasury bonds. Now, if the entity intend to reissue reissued it, so, the reissuance of treasury bonds at premium or discount has similar procedures as when bonds are originally issued. So, ang, ang accounting treatment lang natin is similar lang din kung paano natin ini-issued yung bond. If not subsequently sold on the bond's due date, it will be cancelled against the bond's payable account. So, kung kanina, ang sabi ko, di ba, hindi siya, hindi siya kinakancel agad. Hindi siya kinakancel agad kapag lang hindi na siya nabibenta. So, so kapag naisip na ng entity, ay, kung hindi na siya mabenta, okay, fine. I-cancel out na natin yung treasury bonds. So, i-cancel nila yon against the bond's payable account. So, kapag pin-resent natin ang treasury bonds, so, ang treasury bonds ay dinededact natin from the total bonds payable. So, if ang bonds payable natin is an amount, uh, or has an amount of 5 million, and then the treasury bonds has an amount of 3 million, so, i-less lang natin yun. 5 million minus 3 million, it will then be equal to 2 million. Moving on to our next topic, we have here bond refunding or also known as bond refinancing. It is a premature retirement of the old bonds by means of issuing new bonds payable. There were old bonds and you paid them. Pero paano ka nga ba nagbayad? You issue new bonds payable to pay off the old ones. Therefore, the old bonds were cancelled and nagkaroon ng bagong bonds payable. Refunding can happen or can be made in two periods. First is you waited for the bonds payable on their maturity date. And only then, you did the refinancing. Kung baga kunwari, meron kang dating utang at umutang ka ulit dahil tapos ka na sa pagbabayad. And the other one naman is in between, in which no accounting problems arises when bonds payable come to their maturity date. Bond refunding and bond retirement prior to maturity date has the same concept. The only difference is the terminology or the account title used in recording gains or losses. In bond retirement prior to maturity date, early retirement ang ginagamit. Well, in bond refinancing, extinguishment of bonds is used. So, what will be our journal entry? You just have to debit bonds payable dahil mawawala siya and credit discount on bonds payable if any. And dahil nga nagbabayad ka, you are going to credit cash. And you also have to determine if there is a gain or loss on extinguishment of bonds. And that's just how you record retirement of the old bonds. So saan nga ba nang galing yung cash na pinangbayad mo? Probably because you issue new bonds payable. And the issuance of new bonds does not include the old ones. Huwag mong paghahaluin or pagsasamahin. Therefore, you debit cash and credit bonds payable. And if there is a premium or discount, that will also be credited. Maybe you're wondering if the entry for the retirement of the old bonds will come before the issuance of the new bonds. Well, pwede naman silang pagbalik ta rin. There will be no problem. That's just how it was presented for you to see that the entry for bond retirement is the same as bond refinancing when we are talking about all bonds payable. In bond retirement, you have the entry for the date, payment of interest, and you de-recognize the bonds payable. In here, 
there is only a reissuance of the new bonds. Next is the methods on amortization. I think you're quite familiar with these three approaches because we already discussed this on our account on me season 1 chapter 19 financial asset at amortized cost so let's begin with the first one straight line method amortized discounts or premiums evenly over bond life we only use this method in situations where the results are not materially different from the effective interest method if it is a short-term bond we can use the straight line because it is more effective and efficient and the difference is very immaterial to arrive at the periodic amortization, divide the amount of the premium or discount on bonds payable by the life of the bonds. Next is the band outstanding method. It is applicable for serial bonds and provides for a decreasing amount of amortization. Band outstanding is determined every bond year. The annual discount amortization can be computed by multiplying the fractions by the amount of the discounts same as the computation for the annual premium amortization, the fractions will be multiplied by the amount of the premiums. And finally, effective interest method or also referred to as interest or scientific method. It matches the interest expense more closely to bond carrying amount. It is the method that will be discussed further in the next chapter. Premature retirement of serial bonds. Serial bonds retire every year. What if the serial bonds are scheduled to retire 4 years from now and you retire it today? What will be the accounting treatment? The concept is the same as the bond retirement prior to maturity date. You need to update amortization the moment you retire bonds payable. You also need to record the interest payment regarding that and remove the bonds payable that will take a long time to retire. The only thing that will make it difficult is determining the amount of premium or discount that has not been amortized. We are down to our last topic for today which is the fair value option of measuring bonds payable. Not in all cases, we measure bonds payable initially at present value and subsequently at amortized cost. There are cases that bonds payable can be measured at fair value both on initial and subsequent recognition. It says here that at initial recognition, bonds payable may be irrevocably designated as at fair value through profit or loss. If from the very beginning, the issuer of the company says that they want to irrevocably designate that the bonds payable will be measured at fair value through profit or loss, so be it. Hindi pwedeng mabawi or mabago pa dahil at initial recognition ay sinabi na. Now, what will be the effect if this were to be the measurement chosen by the entity? First is that no amortization needed. Why? Because the measurement is at fair value and not at amortized cost. Also, if there is no amortization, the account titles of premium or discount should not be presented or recorded. Another effect is that the interest expense is based on nominal or stated rate. Even if the effective rate or market rate is given, this will be ignored. Moving on, it is also stated that transaction costs are not capitalized but rather it will be expense outright or immediately. Dahil ang effect ng transaction cost ay matagal and part ito ng amortization, it will not be included in the capitalization. Furthermore, in fair value option, bonds payable are not recorded at face but at fair value. Here are the pro forma entries. First is we debit cash and credit bonds payable. And that is the entry for the issue ones of bonds. Second, if there is a transaction cost, we debit the cost and credit cash. And that will be an expense account. For the payment of interest, we debit interest expense and credit cash. 
Lastly, if there are any changes in fair value, gain or loss will arise. The entry will be debit funds payable and credit gain from change in fair value. Kung sakali naman na tumaas yung utang mo, the entry will be debit loss from change in fair value and credit bonds payable account. Gumagalaw ang bonds payable whenever there are changes in fair value and these changes will be reflected in profit or loss. You really have to determine the components of the gains or losses on changes in fair value. In general rule, mapupunta sila sa profit or loss. If it is possible na ma-determine kung magkano yung credit risk components ng gain or loss, the one pertaining to credit risk will not be reported in profit or loss but rather it will be recorded in OCI or other comprehensive income. And yung residual or yung matitira, ayon ang recorded sa profit or loss. Pero ano nga ba tong credit risk na binabanggit ko? This is the risk where you may not be able to pay or the liability may not be paid. If this risk exists, the presentation is in OCI or other comprehensive income. Remember, credit risk. If there is another type of risk such as currency risk or interest risk, it will be ignored. If there is gain or loss reported in OCI, it will be transferred to retained earnings. It can no longer be reported in income statement because there is a concept that when you become part of an equity, you cannot go out but can only be recycled within the equity. The pro forma entry kapag na-determine mo yung credit risk or yung residual will be debit loss on credit risk OCI and loss from change in fair value and credit funds payable. But here is the exemption. In case na determine mo yung credit risk and ipepresent mo sana siya sa OCI, kapag ginawa mo yun, there will be an accounting mismatch. You will not present that credit risk but rather you will go back to the rule where it is in profit or loss even if alam mo na pwede na siya sa OCI. If you present the difference in OCI and the effect on the profit or loss is material, that's the scenario where there is an accounting mismatch. That will be all for Chapter 5, Bonds Payable. I hope you've learned something from us. Thank you so much for watching and listening. See you on our next video. Let's learn together to achieve our dreams.